Yeah, so as far as attaining 60% of an ATR value, um, Bloodhound doesn't calculate percentage. So you'll have to do that math in your head and then just plug that directly into the solver. So, all right, so let's demonstrate how you would do that. All right, so let's get Bloodhound open. And then first thing we want to do is uh, switch over to the main tab here and create a file name first. And all right, and the next thing we're going to need to do is you're going to need to, well, actually, I, I, yeah, you're running on a one minute chart here. Yes. Okay, good. So, yeah, so since you're running system on a one minute chart there, so whether it's Bloodhound or Blackbird, yeah, so in Bloodhound, we're going to need to add a daily chart. So you can calculate that ATR on the daily chart. So let's add a chart. There we go. And then we're going to switch this chart or time frame over to a one day uh, chart there. So um, and, you know, if your you know, if if your time frames are all on the same instrument, then you can just leave the instrument blank there. Right. Don't don't lock it in. So. Um, yeah, just a little tip. If you do set up an instrument, then when the futures contracts roll over, you also need to roll over this instrument manually in your Bloodhound template. So unfortunately, NinjaTrader does not provide a rollover mechanism for indicators. So not yet. Uh, hopefully someday they'll add that benefit that us vendors have been asking for for a long time. But for now, yeah, NinjaTrader doesn't have any kind of rollover mechanism. So you just have to do that yourself. So that's why you would want to leave this blank for futures. So, all right, so we have a daily time frame here. And so from that, um, let's see, well, yeah, from that, now we're going to add a threshold solver. So let's go to the solvers list. And now we can see we actually have two different time frames that we can add a new solver to. So let's go to the daily time frame there and let's drop down a threshold solver. There we go. So I will just check for an ATR greater than um, 50 points here. Um, that should be pretty darn easy on the NQ there. So now for the input, right, then we want the ATR. And there we go. So right there's our ATR. All right. And Giles wants to use a 22 period. So there we go. And so again, if you want to average this ATR, just to demonstrate there, what you can do is pick whatever averaging formula you want to use, whether it's the EMA or maybe the SMA right let's see there you go there's the SMA and then you would use the actually I got it backwards but you would use the nested input so actually you would feed the ATR or whatever indicator you want to average you would feed that into the SMA so I would need to put the SMA on first and then put the ATR on last. So, right, so again, I have it backwards. I'm feeding the SMA into the ATR. So for this example, it's backwards, but that's what the nested button is, is so you can feed one indicator into another indicator. Um, you know, and most commonly, you would be feeding some indicator into the SMA to, to further average it out or smooth it out. So, all right, but anyways, let's remove that. Um, so, all right, so our ATR is already set up. Click OK. Um, and you'll notice, I haven't taken care of this, but Blood Island is telling me that it needs a chart reload, right? And that's because we added a secondary time frame to Bloodhound. So um, the only way you can get NinjaTrader to spin up this secondary time frame is you have to reload the chart there. So that's one thing that NinjaTrader will not do automatically.
Um, all right, but I'm going to finish setting up this solver before we actually reload here. So, all right, so we have the ATR in the input. Next is the um, threshold rules here. And this is where we would put in that 50 points. Um, and again, you would have to do the math to figure out what 60% of 50 points is. Um, and so let's change the settings to greater than or equals, right? And so you don't know. So, right, the ATR is a non-directional indicator, right? So when you're using a non-directional indicator, you need both a long output and a short output for that condition because you don't know if you're going to be trading long or trading short when the ATR, you know, has a certain um, uh, minimum value there. And so let's put in 50 there. And you got to remember, what is your ATR outputting? So it's right. It's outputting points. So if you want to convert it to ticks, um, well, you'd have to get your own custom ATR and have it output value, values in ticks. So what you're putting in, since the since the ATR outputs in points, then what you're putting into the threshold rules there is also points. So you remember, so you're, what you're looking for has to match whatever your indicator is outputting. So Bloodhound is not going to uh, change the output, you know, of your indicator. All right, and click OK, and that's it. Let's close this up. So now we can actually reload the chart. And yeah, as expected, you know, I definitely expected um, the NQ to be moving more than 50 points um, in any given day, just so that we can see, you know, more days on the chart. Let's switch over to maybe like a 30 minute chart. There we go. All right. <clears throat> there. Now, one thing, one little tip here about NinjaTrader is, right, I only have, let's see how many days I have on the chart. Right. So I only have five days on the chart. But the ATR is trying to calculate 22 days. So the ATR is only getting four days of data because this chart only has four five days of data. So you guys have to learn how NinjaTrader operates. So the quick version is you need at least 22, 20, oops, ah, I hit the enter key by accident. Hold on, let's try that one more time here. So you need at least 23 days, one extra day, um, more than the period of the indicator, well, you know, for the ATR. Since it's a 22 period ATR, you need at least one extra day there to get a proper 22 day ATR calculation. So there, I switch that over. And let's do one other thing here. There we go. Trading hours. And let me make this uh, visible. There we go. There. All right. So now that we have, yeah, 23 days of data here, let's let's see if I can find a value here that's kind of in line where what the average ATR is. So we'll just have to take a guess at this. Um, oops. There we go. All right, 300 points. Um, we got something we can work with. Well, all right, yeah, so these first 
couple of days here on the chart you know obviously we haven't gotten to a 22 period but those first couple of days are averaging over 300 points and then we can see there's some con consolidation here which are under 300 points and then the ATR drops below 300 points and let's see if it expands back up no it doesn't look like it does there we go 275 I'll split the difference all right there yeah so now we can see when some of these days are above 275 points on the ATR and and then once there's a little bit of consolidation then it drops off and then we get a nice long ranging day and then it ATR you know moves above 275 then another consolidation day and it drops down then we get another long day down so there we go there we have it all right so there you go guys this is the threshold solver all right and so you're looking for an ATR greater than whatever that that value is and since your suggestion was 50 points I'm guessing it's probably the ES um, yeah that would be my guess would probably be the ES so it's a little too much for oil uh, well actually 60 percent the 50 points yeah that's way too much for oil all right let me scroll down to the bottom of the Q&A window here and see what kind of follow-up questions there are okay let's see here so Giles is saying yeah he wants to take the ATR 22 period uh, on a daily chart and he calculates 60 percent of that and apply it to a one minute chart yeah so yeah so I've already addressed that that Bloodhound does not calculate percentages so you would have to have a create a custom indicator um, to do that let's see Giles is asking isn't the NQ and YM in ticks already? Uh, everything has a tick value. But anyways, um, yeah, I would suggest going to Investopedia, yeah, to, to look those up for each of the instruments there. <laughs> Giles, you were reading my mind. I was going to ask you if you kind of knew where the NQ was sitting at. <laughs> but I just figured I would show people how to just kind of... Um, you know, plug in some numbers and figure it out um, using the threshold solver. So I didn't ask you, but yeah, thanks, Kyle. So yeah, so the NQ is around 285. Yeah, which lines up with my 275 here that I kind of figured out slowly through uh, trial and error there. All right. Um, yeah, all right, so it looks like we're almost getting to the end of Giles's questions um, yeah so sorry guys I'm just thinking to myself here so Giles is asking yeah do the math each day and plug in that new value um, correct yeah yeah you know or you know once you ask somebody in the trading community if um, there actually might be an ATR with a percentage um, input so it'll modify the output of the ATR you know based on that percentage um, you know so yeah so there might be an ATR indicator customized ATR indicator out there that has two outputs right the the standard ATR's value and then a percentage of that value already actually yeah no uh, you know what actually might work so you will have to verify this, Giles. Um, I'm not going to do the math for you. Um, so, uh, but you could test this out. And um, I guess the people to ask is NinjaTrader, since NinjaTrader wrote this ATR, right? It's built into the platform, so they wrote the code. So you could ask NinjaTrader if this works out. But it's my understanding, based on the formula, you know, or you could research the formula for the ATR yourself, you know, and verify this. But I think what you can do is we can take, um, yeah, it's too bad 
Ninja Trade doesn't have a percentage indicator <clears throat> uh, for modifying the output, kind of like how an SMA, you know, can smooth an indicator. A percentage could calculate that percentage, but but they don't. Um, as far as actually, you know what? I should check. Because every once in a while, they do add. Every once in a great while, they will add a new indicator here, but I don't see a percentage indicator. Okay, so what you could do is try this um, so I can feed the ATR in. Oh, wait, no, that only works for Blackbird. Um, yeah, no, that, that doesn't work, um, unfortunately. So what I was thinking here right is your base indicator the ATR 22 and then feed that into another indicator where you could put 0.6 right oh, but see you can't put 0.6 because it's a period so you can't put a fraction of a bar in there you know but if there's some kind of indicator where you could put 0.6 instead of 6 you know that would then you know take 0.6 of ATR you know that's what you're looking to do you know that is the math behind it so but yeah that's a trick you can do in Blackbird um, but not not in Bloodhound um, just to finish off you know that comment is that yes every day you would have to figure out what your 60% of the ATR that you're looking for and replace both of these values here um, before the day begins. Yep. <clears throat> Plug in those new values there. At least until you get some kind of you know customized ATR where you can plug in 6% into the indicator. You know, um, so. so if you had an ATR indicator that outputs 60%, um, you, you know, you would still need to plug in, you know, what, what are you looking for that 60% value to be great. Oh, 50. That's right. Yeah, you said 50 points. All right. Yeah, so if you had an ATR that could output a percentage of the normal ATR value, yeah, then you you could then leave this at 50. Yeah, then you could just leave that at 50. So permanently. Right, because then the ATR is actually calculating 60% of its of its normal value. All right, I think we have finished getting through this question. So yeah, Guile says he's calculating the 60% in his market analyzer. Yeah, good. So it looks like it's yeah, going to be pretty easy to swap in that 60% number there until you find yourself a custom ATR that does it for you. All right, yep, so it looks like we got through Giles' question there and then some.